Now is Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois. He serves on the Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman Kinzinger, also a veteran of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Thanks very much uh, for being yeah, here. Yep. Uh, you hear this, and this is a warning we hear often, uh, not just from DHS, from the FBI. We hear it from, from the Intelligence Committee, Senate, and the Hill. Russia is still attacking. They're still seeking to get into our political process. What's being done to stop this kind of influence? Uh, I mean, we're just about a year away from uh, the, the midterm elections in 2018. More needs to be done. That's what needs to be done. I mean, exposing this is the first thing. So as your reporter had mentioned, you know, being aware of, and as Senator Langford mentioned, being aware of using both sides of the NFL debate hashtags to try to create dissension, uh, knowing that if you log on to Facebook or a social media account and you see a uh, article that seems crazy, it probably is. It could be one of these real fake news things we see. So I think understanding that they're doing this is one. Number two, obviously election security is essential, making sure that hacking the voter rolls and finding out what's going on and ultimately, God forbid, ever hacking vote totals. There's been no accusation of that yet. Uh, and then the other thing is I think we have to be on offense against the Russians as well. Whether that's in Eastern Europe, they're doing the same thing all through Europe. We need to be involved with our own global engagement center, uh, which we have funded in the House of Representatives, to try to push back against this Russian influence because there's nothing Vladimir Putin fears more than losing his own election. And so I think we need to talk about fighting fire with fire here to some extent as well. Is it difficult for the U.S. to respond as aggressively as necessary when the president himself questions the intelligence which has found that Russia did interfere in the election process and continues to interfere in the political process? Well, it's obviously not helpful, um, and, I, and I think it's counter to the narrative we need. I think this would be very beneficial to the president to say, look, it's obvious when what we saw with these Facebook ads, there were ads promoting Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump, other people, and it was all about creating political debate and dissension and anger. And I think recognizing that is not questioning the legitimacy of the president's election, but it is saying they're going to try this in 2018. And in 2020, I guarantee the Russians are going to try this against President Trump because he's, they're, they're not going to like him. But they're doing this to tear apart a free and open society. They're exploiting the very advantage we have, which is something that... By the way, Vladimir Putin doesn't give them, which is the ability to express ourselves free and openly with whatever opinion. And so they're going to exploit that, and we have to be aware of it. And, you know, it obviously it would be beneficial if the president was, was on front with that. Let me ask you this. Russia did not interfere with voting systems in 2016, vote counts, etc. But I've spoken to members of, of both Republican and Democrat of the House and Senate Intelligence Committees who say that they would not put it past Russia to do that the next time around in 2018 in 2020. Is that a concern of yours as well, that Russia might the next time try to interfere with action vote counting? Oh, 100 uh, percent. You look at the breaches that happen, whether it's with a credit reporting agency or breaches that happen in medical records, anything like that, they can enter these systems. They could put something downrange into these voting machines that somehow is going to end up in the production process that would give them control over them. I'm not a tech expert, but I know that's a huge concern. And the biggest thing, again, the Russians, they don't necessarily care who wins. The biggest thing they want to do, the thing that get, underpins our hope in democracy and the institution, whether it's of Congress or the White House, is the fact that we can vote and have our vote heard. If they can undermine that and make people think that their vote didn't count in a massive scale or that they affected outcomes, that will be the biggest threat to undermining democracy. The situation on the Korean Peninsula is escalating. You, you have the leaders of America and North Korea trading threats, frankly, uh, of war. You met with the South Korean foreign minister yesterday, I understand. Is the U.S., are the U.S. and North Korea close to or in danger of a military conflict? I think we're in danger of it. I don't think we're close. I think right now we're giving economic sanctions time to work. Uh, I think reducing the amount of oil obviously going in, bringing the Chinese online, 85 percent of, of any trade goes over that Chinese border. They can shut it down. Uh, I think we're stepping up the pressure. We have to be clear, though, that there is a military option, because also knowing that can make diplomacy against an adversary all the more stronger. So I don't think people need to lose sleep tonight, but understand the North Koreans are progressing very fast. And they're marrying technology, nuclear technology, to a threat to do it. Talk about sinking Japan, Guam, and the United States, and then test, which actually put them in that range of it. So uh, it's a very dangerous situation, uh, but I think the national security structure of the United States and South Korea are very apt to handle this. Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger, thanks very much. Yeah, you bet. Anytime.